Good morning. It's Tuesday, April 25th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The House of Wisdom, and our scripture is Proverbs, chapter 9, where Solomon writes, Wisdom has built her house. She has carved its seven columns. She has prepared a great banquet, mixed the wines, and set the table. She has sent her servants to invite everyone to come. She calls out from the heights overlooking the city. Come in with me, she urges the simple. To those who lack good judgment, she says, Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways behind and begin to live. Learn to use good judgment. The proverb writer has purposefully described the open-handedness of a God in a universal invitation to gain wisdom. There's a great banquet of wisdom, an army of messengers to spread the open offer to come close to the source. It's a house of life-giving good judgment. It's a place to grow strong, leaving the simplicity of childish ways for the strength of providing for others. The quote-unquote front door of wisdom's house arrived early on in the introduction Solomon gave the Proverbs. Where to begin if you wish to live a life of disciplined success, knowing how to do what's right, just, and fair. Proverbs 1 verse 7. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. The foundation of wisdom's house is fearing God, being reverent, respectful, and obedient to our Creator. It's a small but exceedingly meaningful and important step to begin any journey. If that step is in the wrong direction, the end of the journey will not be what one hoped. That first step, surrendering every aspect of your life to reverencing God all through the journey, cannot be overvalued. John was a retired naval officer I met many years ago. He attempted to sidestep that first step. He had seen much of the world and experienced many different cultures, but neglected Solomon's advice about wisdom's front door. He had his own agenda, and that was his God. Now, I do not say that with prejudice or lightly. It's simply an observable fact. Whatever you do reveals that to which you give your allegiance. If I go fishing 12 hours a day, it's a reasonable assumption my behavior means I'm devoted to fishing. A living, breathing, passionate thirst for God's kingdom indicates you have, at least, begun the journey towards wisdom. The retired Navy man craved experiences that pleased him. When we met, he was ready to quote-unquote experience faith. He went through the motions, profession of faith, baptism, church membership. But for John, it was like a field trip, another experience. Soon, that brush with religious activities became boring and then turned hostile. In the end, he became a sad footnote on the evening news, committing suicide in a standoff with police in front of the local Kmart store. I cried privately over John for months. He had made the choice of a foolish and anguished moment after trying to live life on his own. In the end, experiences and the pleasure he thought they ought to bring him just weren't enough. For you today, it's not enough to proclaim faith and get wed in a baptismal ceremony and have your name recorded on a church membership roster and attend church regularly for the rest of your life. Solomon did all that and also experienced every pleasure possible. And he came to understand that real wisdom meant reverencing Almighty God. Scripture tells us how we should respond to God, our Maker. Psalm chapter 46. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.